டாக்டர் டி வி கீதா ப்ரொஃபஸர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கம்ப்யூட்டர் சயின்ஸ் காலேஜ் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் கிண்டி அண்ணா யூனிவர்சிட்டி ஹர் ஸ்பெஷல் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஆர்டிபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் அண்ட் நேச்சுரல் லாங்குவேஜ் ஷி ஹஸ் பப்ளிஷ்ட் மோர் தேன் ஒன் ஃபார்ட்டி த்ரீ ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் இன் நேஷனல் அண்ட் இன்டர்நேஷனல் ஜேர்னல்ஸ் ஷி ஹஸ் கைடட் அரவுண்ட் செவன் பிஹெச்டி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஷி ஹஸ் காட் யங் சயின்டிஸ்ட் அவார்ட் ஃப்ரம் கவர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு இன் த இயர் டூ தௌசண்ட் சீஃப் மினிஸ்டர்ஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் மென்ஷன் அவார்ட் இன் த இயர் டூ தௌசண்ட் டூ அண்ட் உமன் ஆஃப் எக்ஸலன்ஸ் பை ரோட்ரி கிளப் இன் த இயர் டூ தௌசண்ட் த்ரீ வெல்கம் டு த யூஜிசி லெக்சர் சீரீஸ் யூ ஆல்ரெடி சீன் three parts of the sql query language in this lecture we are going to look at some advanced features of sql which include how to list some examples of join op- other join operations which you have already seen slightly in, when we were discussing uh, relational algebra but we are going to look at how sql does that then we are going to look at some update operations then we are going to explain the use of views and what is null values as um, as uh, related to relational databases so let's start with joins so when you look at join you have inner join you have different types of join like inner join left join right join full join outer join left outer right outer full outer you can have different types of join inner join is the normal join that we talk about the other uh, three types are different types of joins which we are going to discuss more in detail as we go along other than that the select operation has got the same that is select same then the join uh, of one table with the other table this is where the joins differ on some qualification list where this the rest of the part of the sql query is what we have already seen so unless it is specifically stated uh, it is the inner join that's the by default it means it's the inner join that's the default so what is the meaning of inner join just let, just look at a quick revision of what we mean by inner join inner join means only rows that match such conditions are returned so suppose you have s dot sid and r r dot sid and we are talking about join of s and r only if all those rows that match this or that have this condition are taken out and uh, take part in the join relation so returns only those sailors who have reserved boats so select sid Uh, s dot name r dot bid from sailors yes natural join reserves are natural means equi join so this can be written as equi join also so uh, for each pair of attributes with the same name so here we have specific uh, specified it explicitly while here it is not necessary to specify it explicitly this we have already seen this is called as inner join this is called as natural join now let us like take an example and understand this better so this again we are looking at sql we have understood the concept already when we were speaking about relation algebra we have discussed all these operations so select s dot sid s dot name r dot bid uh, that is boat id from sailors yes in a join reserves okay so reserves are so sailors s yes is one relation reserves are is another relation and we are looking at on s dot sid equal to r dot sid so now look at these two you have only 2295 and 2295 31 doesn't have a matching here in the reserve relation so what comes into the picture will be only the where s dot sid is equal to r dot sid this is r this is s so you have um, dustin 22 um, so you want s dot sid um, s dot name okay and r dot bid so you have this coming into the picture so this is the inner join now let's go to the other joins now first let's look at left outer join so left outer join returns all matched rows as it did for inner join plus all unmatched rows from the table on the left of the relation of the join class so whatever was left unmatched on the left is also included but obviously it does not have a matching uh, in the right part of the join class those values are put as null so for example use nulls in fields which have non matching tuples so select s dot sid equal to uh, s dot name r dot b bid this is the same as this except that instead of inner join we have got left outer join so it will return all sailors and information on whether they have or have not reserved boats so previous example only if they have reserved you will get here now 31 does not have a corresponding that means he does has not reserved any boat so you will get th- uh, here you will get you will get that and you will get the name we will see this as we go along if you look here this is the two relation and you will get here 
31 lubber. Here you do not have a corresponding boat which is he has not reserved a boat. So, here actually you will get the null value ok. This is the left outer joint. So, another example if you have a loan and borrower, a borrower information is missing for L260 loan number 260 and similarly uh, here for L155 uh, loan number you do not have a corresponding loan information. So, this is an example where there are uh, no matches in both sides. So, now let us take the inner join if you take the inner join only the matching that is 170 to 230 matching will come you will get 170 downturn 3000 jones the matching here. So, jones and so on. So, that is what you will get here, but if you take left out a join. So, we are bothered about the left hand side here we are talking about the left hand side of the relation. So, assuming this is the left and this is the right then you will have the 170 and 230 as before, but you will in addition you will get also the L260, but you do not have a corresponding here. So, you will get L260 Perry Ridge 1700, but correspondingly you do not have a customer name or a loan number here. So, you will get two null values. This is the left outer joint which we have already seen. Next correspondingly you will have something called a right outer joint. Now, right outer joint returns all matched rows plus all unmatched rows from the table, but this time on the right hand side of the joint class. So, you have select RS ID B, B ID B dot name from the serves R right out a join boards B on R B ID equal to board B ID. So, it will return all boards and information on which ones have been reserved. So, it does not bother whether it is reserved or not. Pre, if it was just a join in a join you would have got only uh, the reserved and the boards information. So, you, here you have that uh, told in the same thing, but you have right out a join. So, here you have the uh, reservations and here you have the boat table. So, this is this uh, reserved uh, relation and this is the boat relation. So, here actually only 101 and um, see these are the two. So, 101 and 103 are matching, but you will get 102 and 104 also because we are doing a right out a join. So, you get 102 and 104 for which there is no corresponding reservation. So, no one has reserved, no sailor has reserved, so, but this is there already because of the right outer join. As you can see in many database applications, this is also information that we may need when we want to know which are the boards that have not yet been reserved for example, in this example. So, that is necessary. So, for those these type of joins are very important. This is the inner join for the, no, this is the right outer join for the same relation we saw last time. So, here you have the inner join, here you would have for 155, here this is the one that does not have a corresponding uh, relation here, I mean tuple here matching tuple. So, this, uh, this will come, but correspondingly this will not be available. So, that is what is shown here. So, find all customers who have either an account or a loan, but not both at the bank, then this would be very important. So, select customer name from depositor natural full outer joint borrower where account number is null or loan number is null. So, here we have done only right outer join. Now, we are going to look at the next, we have not looked at this yet. This is the full outer join where non matching tuples from the both the left side of the join class and the right side of the join class will be considered. So, that is called the full outer join. The full outer join returns all matched or unmatched rows from the tables on both sides of the join class. So, this is the example it returns all boards and all information on reserve, reserves. So, here you have this is the same as before because there is uh, boards that have not been here. So, note in this case it is the same as the right outer join because this is a foreign key in reserve. So, all reservations only if there is a board you can reserve. So, I mean you cannot have a reservation which is not there in the board. So, that way this does not make a difference. Now, let us look at um, the same example uh, for uh, the other borrower and loan that we saw. So, this was what was we were trying to explain here. This is the relation loan and borrower. So, corresponding to this you will have a null for the loan number and his and corresponding to this you will have a um, null for the uh, loan. So, this is what uh, is the full outer join you can understand the whole uh, concept of full outer join in from that example. So, you have a null here corresponding customer name. Uh, because there is no corresponding L260 and for 155 you do not have a branch name and amount. So, this is a full outer. So, if you want to know a person who has uh, I mean he does not have both then you have to take this, this is the example you have to take this row and this row. Now, that is about the 
operations as far as we have seen the different types of joints. So, normally we have looked at natural joint and that is the equi joint and we have looked at general the joint, then theta joint and so on. And then we have looked at uh, left outer joint where uh, non matching tuples from the left hand side of the joint class are also uh, become part of the joint relation and then the right outer joint where only the uh, unmatched tuples from the right side of the joint class will come inside the joint relation unmatched and then you have the full outer joint from both left and right un unmatched are coming in the uh, relation. So, that is about the joint. So, you can see that there are some applications where that is also necessary. Now, let us go to another aspect of the SQL advance which we want to talk about which is the insert. So, here it inserts into the table the column list and values value list insert into table and you can have a select statement also. So, insert into boards values 105 clipper purple you are just inputting the values. Now, insert into boards BID color values 99 yellow. Now, look at the two difference here we are not talking about what are the attribute values because there are only three attributes and the three attributes are given in the correct order here. Here we have only two attributes and so you are specifying the attributes. So, you can bulk insert from one table to another, but only thing it must be type compatible because you cannot insert from a table about boards into a table about loans that does not make sense. So, insert into temp BID select r dot BID from reserves uh, reserves relation r where r i s c d equal to 22. So, bulk inserts are possible in some notions of uh, SQL. Then we go to delete and update. So, delete from table name where the qualification. So, delete from boards where color equal to red, delete from boards B where B equal to BID equal to select R dot bit from reserves dot R where R dot SID equal to 22. So, you can have both these, uh, this is a much more explicit way of telling the same thing. You can also modify tuples using the tup, uh, update statement. So, update boards set color equal to green where bid equal to 103. So, you are trying to change the color of the boat here. So, that is also possible. Then you have something called derived relations. So, SQL allows a subquery expression to be used in the from clause. So, a subquery part can be used in the uh, from clause. So, find the average account balance of those branches where the average account balance is greater than 1200. So, select branch name average balance from this is like a nested, but we are telling a little bit more uh, in detail. So, select branch name average balance from account group by branch name as a bra branch average branch name average balance where average balance is greater than 1200. So, this whole thing is a subquery and from that subquery you are using that subquery in the from class. Okay. So, this part is a subquery this part. Okay. So, this part says that uh, you find the average account balance of those branches where the average account balance is greater than 1200. So, you are trying to find out the balance where the account balance is greater than 1200. So, this is a way of writing it. So, that we do not have to use the having class which we have seen before. Since we compute the temporary view relation branch average in the from class. So, here we are selecting that branch average and the attributes of branch average that is branch name and average balance can be used directly in the where class. So, that is the difference. The same thing we have achieved before using another uh, way of, so please note SQL you want to achieve something, it is not necessary that there is only one way to write the SQL class. It, uh, there are many ways, we will see later on when we are talking about query optimization, what is the, um, uh, how do you decide which is the better way of writing the query. But as of now at this point of time it is it is uh, sufficient for you to understand that you have to only know how to write the query using any of the provisions provided by SQL as long as you get the correct answer. We are not looking at efficiency at this point of time. Next we look at what is called as view definition. Now, a relation that is not of the conceptual model that is uh, when we are deciding on a database we design the, the relations. Okay. Now, other than those relations there are some relations that is made visible to the user it is called as a virtual relation okay, and that is called as a view. Okay. So, a view is defined as a create statement which has the form like this. So, you are creating a view you are not creating a relation you are creating a view with which satisfies the query expression. So, the query expression is any legal SQL expression the view name is represented by V. Once a view is defined the view can be used as though it was a relation. So, this is an example of a view 
where uh, uh, consisting of branches and their customers. So, you are just trying to find and then from that you can use uh, find all customers of the Perry Ridge branch you can use this all customer like here as if it was a relation that is what we are trying to tell you. And then you have some uses of queues. So, hiding some information uh, consider a user who needs to know a customer's name loan number, but has no need to see the loan amount. So, if you, use are also used for um, defining a view to, uh, to uh, hide information. Sometimes we will look at this later, you want to grant the user some permission, we want only uh, him to see only some portion of the relation, then we can use a view. And you can also use views to have uh, predefined queries that are used very often. So, when a view is created, we will look at how this processing of views is concerned later. So, now let us take a small break. Welcome back after the break. So, before the break we were looking at what is views. As I already told you, views is basically a virtual table that means or a virtual relation that means it is a relation not designed, but uh, only for the purpose of making the user see only portions of the relation and uh, portions of uh, the relations created as a result of queries we use views. So, how is uh, views processed? When a view is created the query expression is stored in the database along with the view name and the expression is substituted anywhere the queries uh, in any query that uses the view. So, actually the, uh, the evaluation is done only at that particular moment when a query is actually used. So, uh, one view may be used in the expression defining another view and so on, a view can directly depend on a view. So, a view is used as, as though it was a relation except that physically it is not stored as a relation. So, a way to define the meaning of views is in terms of other views. So, repeat find any view relation replace a view v, v, v i by the expression defining v i until no more view relations are present. So, what you do is you can have any recursion type of views. So, basically what you do when you see a view you expand uh, how that view was created in that if in that expansion you had a view again expand it. So, that recursion is what is defined here. So, as long as view definitions are recursive this loop will obviously terminate as long as you do not keep on calling views this will terminate. Now, let us look at the next topic which is with class. So, with class provides a way of defining a temporary view whose definition is available only to the query. Now, previously it was available throughout in that particular session here only to the query. So, if you want views of that top, so find all accounts with the maximum balance with maximum balance value as and this is a normal select operation. So, you can do that also. So, you can have um, complex queries with class. Let us take, take an example find all branches where the total account deposit is greater than the average of the total account deposits at all branches. So, what are you doing here with branch total this is the with tells us that I am creating a view branch total with branch name and value as attributes as this is the query. So, select branch name sum balance from account group by branch name. Now, what are we getting here we are getting the balance amount of all the branches then with branch total average value as. So, here we are creating another view called branch total average value that is one attribute select average value from branch total from this branch total select the average and then select branch name branch total branch total average and then try to find out all the branches which is got this is that which is whose total value is greater than the average value. So, this is an example of a complex query with the with class where we are using this branch total and branch total average as views that are later on used by this query. So, the exact syntax supported by the database may vary. For example, in Oracle the syntax is of this sort uh, and in certain uh, we have looked at the SQL. Next let us look at update of a view. So, you can create a view of all loan data and the loan relation hiding the amount I mean attribute. So, you can create that and then if you want to add a new tuple to the loan branch insert into loan branch value L37 Perry Ridge. Uh, this insertion must be represented by the insertion of the tuple like this because we have not put the amount there. So, in the loan relation original relation which used this you would have had to increase. Now, what we are trying to tell is view sees only certain portion of a relation and you are inserting something into that view. Suppose you have hidden one attribute that attribute will get a value null. So, some updates through views are impossible to translate into updates on the relation. It is not it is not correct to say that every view that you update will be translated into a physical relation. There are some 
um, updates where this cannot be done. So, for example, create a view loan number branch name amount from loan where branch name is equal to Perry Rich and then you insert into V values L99 down 10 23. Now, you can't insert all customer values Perry Rich John because you do not have a loan the, the um, primary key is not present. So, only on simple views without aggregates you are normally allowed to do updates. So, next let us go into another important concept associated with databases which is the null values. Now, we have seen how null values are introduced right when we looked at uh, left outer join and right outer join and full outer join we looked at how we had this null values inserted by the operation of join itself. So, it is tuples it is possible for tuples to have null values denote by null for some of their attributes we saw how that happened. So, now what is this null signify actually? So, null signifies an unknown value or a value that does not exist. Now, please note the difference between what is known by an unknown value and a value that does not exist. Unknown value means as far as we know, we do not know its value that is called a close word assumption. On the other hand, the value does never exist that means it is an open uh, thing that is it is never existing whether we know or whether we do not. So, the predicate is null can be used to check for null values. So, you have a predicate called is null. Okay, that is normally used to check. So, find all no loan numbers which appear in the loan relation with null values for amount. So, you can check whether this amount is null. So, the result of any arithmetic operation involving null is null. So, example 5 plus null returns null not 5 as you normally know in arithmetic. However, aggregate uh, operations normally ignores the null. So, uh, values are sometimes unknown as I already told you rating has not been assigned or inapplicable no spouse's name SQL provides a special value of null for such situations. The presence of null complicates many issues it is not just put a null and forget it special operators are needed to check if the value is null or not null as we saw before. So, rating greater than 8 true or false and rating is null now is this true what about the and or and not connectives these we have to answer. So, normally when we talk about null we have what is called a three valued logic that is true false and unknown meaning of constructs must be defined carefully. Where clause eliminates rows that do not evaluate to true new operators in particular outer joins are needed. For example, this is the three valued logic. So, any comparison with null returns unknown. So, 5 is less than null will return null uh, unknown and so on. Now, three valued unknown or true true unknown or false unknown unknown or unknown unknown and true and unknown unknown false and unknown false unknown and unknown unknown not unknown is uh, remains unknown this is unlike a normal not operation not unknown does not become known. So, p is unknown evaluates it true if predicate p evaluates to unknown. So, this is a basic three valued logic it is slightly different for, from a normal two valued logic. So, result of where clause is treated as false if it evaluates to unknown. Now, let us look at the table for three valued logic as I explained to you this is the three valued logic. So, you have a true false and null. So, you have uh, these is nulls the null is greater than 0 is considered null plus 1 is null equal to 0 is null null and true is also null this is the difference. So, you have uh, false and true false and false is false now look here true and uh, null is false false and uh, null is false and uh, then these are all null and false ok. So, true and true is true and uh, false and false is false and so on now let us look here here you have true and uh, true is true false and uh, true and false is uh, true and then false and true is true this is a normal uh, or table and with null you have uh, null and true is true ok and uh, then you have um, null and false is null. So, that is the logic that we use ok and similarly null and null is null. So, null values and aggregates now how does null value affect the aggregate you know that we do average we do group by basically average sum and so. So, total all amounts select some amount from loan above statement ignores the null amounts. So, result is null if there is no non null amount all aggregate operation except count ignores tuples with null values only in count if the null value is also there it is counted. So, Next we look at some built in data types in SQL. So, dates containing a 4 digit year month and date 
So, for example, date 2005-727, this is the other way of writing date and time is normally written like this, time in day, in hours and minutes and seconds, hours, minutes and seconds. So, um, this is how it is given. So, time stamp is also, it will be date plus time of day which is nothing but both together. You can also specify interval as a period of time, these are all built in data types. So, uh, example interval one day, subtracting a day, time, time step value from another gives an interval value. Interval values can be added to day, time, time, date, time and time step values. So, you can extract values of individual fields from date, time and time step. So, extract year from r dot start time, you can extract only the year component and you can also have casting of string types to these. So, cast string valued expression as date, you can do that, cast string valued expression as time, you can do that. Other user defined types that we normally use is create type construct in SQL creates user defined type. So, for example, of a user defined type, you can create type dollars as numeric 12 comma 2 final and create domain constraint in SQL to creates user defined domain types. For example, create domain person name character 20 not null, it can never be null and it has character 20. So, types and domains are similar, domains can have constraints such as not null specified under them. So, here type can, you cannot have that, in domain if it is similar, but except that domain you can specify things that it cannot have a null value. So, let us look at some little bit of domain constraints now. Now, domain constraints are the most elementary form of integrity constraint. We will be looking at integrity constraint in detail later. So, they test values inserted in the database and you test queries to ensure that the comparisons make sense. So, two places it does, one is for when you insert values and one is when the queries ask, uh, talk about comparison. So, for example, create domain dollars numeric 12.2, create domain compounds numeric 12.2, you can create both. And you can say create domain dollars numeric, create domain pounds numeric. We cannot assign both have 12 comma 2, but you cannot assign on or compare a value of type dollars to type pounds because you have created this domain. However, we can cast and we can uh, convert type as below. So, cast r comma a as pounds that is possible. So, if you want to do that, you have to do the conversion. So, the check clause in SQL permits domains to be restricted, you can restrict domains. So, use check clause ensures that the early wage domain allows only values greater than a specified value. So, for example, create domain hourly wage numeric 5 comma 2 constraint value test check value greater than or equal to 4. You can say that the hourly value can has to be greater than 4. So, that is possible. So, the domain has a constraint that ensures that the early wage is greater than 4. The, the class here which is called constraint value test is optional, useful to indicate which constraint an update will violate. So, you can have complex conditions in the domain check also, create domain account type character, constraint account type test, check value in checking saving, check branch name in select branch name from branch. So, you can have different types of checks. So, next let us look at something called large object types. So, it is not the database allows only these type of, we are talking basically about SQL. So, you can have photos, videos, CAD files and they are stored as large objects. There are two types of large objects, one is called as blob and one is called as clob. This is a binary large object and this is a character large object. Then we have some integrity constraints, you can have constraints saying that this checking account has to be greater and so on. This will be done when you are doing the insertion itself. So, on a single relation you can as we have seen not null, primary, unique and check, check is what we saw now, this we have seen before. And you can also have a not null which you have already seen. And then you can have a unique value, this says that this can have only a unique value if it forms part of a candidate key. So, the check clause we have already seen, you can check that the assets is greater than or equal to 0, you cannot have it as 0, long and negative. So, this will, this can be done when you are doing the table creation itself, you can set this constraint. So, the check clause in SQL permits domains to be restricted, you can restrict the domain which we have already seen. And then you can also embed in SQL other programming language like C, Java and COBOL and uh, this allows um, SQL to be much more powerful and this is called as embedded SQL. So, in this, this is the basic form of these languages that allows uh, SQL statement in other programming languages. 
So basically we have looked at some examples for join operations, we have discussed some update uh, operations, we have explained the use of views and we have discussed null values. So and these are some of exercises I would like you to do, list the reasons why null values may be introduced, what is a view, why should you have a view and what are the advantages and explain the syntax for creating views.